Hello, uh, let us look at some questions from June 2018. So first, uh, we are looking at the, uh, when the graph of these two equations are drawn in the same axis. Uh, we are looking for the solution of the system. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to put this one into y sub 1, the other one in y sub 2. Of course, we have to solve that for y. And then if you have to uh, sketch it and find the intersection, you wish that negative 1 comma negative 4, as you can see on the bottom. That would have been our answer. So which is choice 2. All right, let's move on to the second question. Which statement is true about the graph of this? Now, when you look at it, the uh, base of this exponential function is 1 over 8. And you can see that that is, in fact, less than 1. When it's less than 1, the graph is always decreasing. Now, here we have, uh, we're trying to find the simplest form. Then we're going to try to factor the numerator first. We can factor out x squared. Then we get x plus 2 from the first two terms, and negative 9 from the second two terms. And we realize that x plus 2 is common. Then we get x squared minus 9 and x plus 2. Factor the uh, difference of squares further. We get x plus 3 and then x minus 3. And x plus 2 is the numerator. Denominator, we realize that x is common factor. Then we get this one left. And we are looking for, hey, two numbers multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 1 will be, in fact, x minus 3 and x plus 2. So then I can rewrite this fraction using factors. And you realize that we have two factors that are the same. x minus, two, or x minus 3 and x plus 2. So when you cancel them out, we are left with choice three. All right, uh, number four. So if you have to approximate, and this question is actually quite, uh, I mean, uh, if you have to approximate this one, you will realize that you will have a y-intercept. So uh, you get to realize that the uh, choice one or choice two would have been the answer. But the thing is, the rate it's going up, if it, if it's before the t, uh, t power, then it will go up much faster than what's given. So therefore, choice two would have been the answer. Now, let's look at number five. We're going to expand the first uh, term here. So x plus 3i squared, then we get x squared plus 6ix and then plus 9i squared. Now, second one is also uh, expanded with the parentheses 4x squared and 12xi and plus 9i squared. So when you look at the uh, x squared terms, we have x squared minus 4x squared. Then we have to get 3x squared, which is the case for all of them. And now when we look at the x terms, 6ix and then subtracting negative 12xi, that means it's adding, so we get 18 xi. Only thing that's possible is choice 3. And then you get to realize that 9 i squares would have canceled each other out. All right. Number 6. Which function is even? <coughs> well, you can look at that. Uh, choice 2 would have been the answer because exponents are even. Because even uh, 4 has uh, negative 4 is in fact has x to the 0 power right next to it, which is 0 being the even. If you have to sketch the first one, you, you can see that it's a symmetrical about the origin, so that's why it is out. Number three, if you have to sketch that one, shifting by two to the right and then five up, then obviously it's not symmetrical about the y-axis, so therefore it's not even. Third one has exponent of four and three is mixed up, so therefore it's not purely even function. So only thing that's possible is choice two. All right. Now, number seven, this is also, uh, uh, kind of, I mean, if you understand, it will be much uh, about the exponential function, it's going to be much easier for you to uh, uh, accept this answer. Exponential function actually sketches this way. Now, that means earlier, when, when especially 
exponential decay function, as you can see over here, is that earlier in the graph, steeper is going to go down. So therefore, we're looking for decay fastest. That means we're looking for the earliest interval, which is 1 through 10 becomes the answer. All right, let's move on to the next one, number 8. Now, when you look at this one, uh, it's very uh, chaotic. There's so many different expressions, and I try to make them equal to each other algebraically. It's going to take a while. So what I have done was I let uh, x equal to 0 first. Then our given value is negative 7. And first one becomes negative 7. I'm plugging in 0 in place of x's. Now, second one also becomes negative 7. On the uh, third one becomes positive 7. Last one, it becomes positive 7. So I eliminated two choices, choice 3 and choice 4. Now, uh, since we have two choices left, I let x equals another value. This time I let x equals 1, then it makes the our given expression equal to 0. Now, when you plug in the 1 in place of x for choice 1, we get 4 squared minus 16, which becomes 0. So therefore, 1 should be our answer. But just to check if you have to work on the second one, you'll realize that that's not equal to 0. So therefore, our answer is choice 1. All right, what is the solution set of this equation? So what I have done was I let the left side is y sub 1, and then right side is y sub 2. And I put them into the equation of on, your gra on your graphing calculator. And then I plug in each one of the values on the table. And you realize that uh, 1 got you the uh, a negative, uh, uh, negative 1 got you the same answer. So is 1.5. So therefore, choice 4 was the our answer. Number 10. So when you look at it, we have a straight line. Uh, meaning that the midline passing through, uh, and then you, you get to realize that one box is two units. So I know that it is between 8 and 10, so we realize that midline is supposed to be at 9. And then I'm um, trying to count how much I'm going up and down by, and it, uh, amplitude was 5. Only thing that has amplitude of 5 and the 9 was choice 1 or 4, but when you look at the uh, equation uh, graph, you can see that it must be a sine graph which makes answer to be choice four. All right, uh, number 11. Uh, we realize the probability of uh, oversleep is point, uh, four, I mean point four eight, and then having a pop quiz is 25%, which is 0.25, but we're looking for a probability that oversleeps and have a pop quiz. It's gonna be a bad day for that person, but uh, if that were to happen, what are we going to do? Since the probabilities are independent, events are independent, so therefore, all we have to do is multiply the probability. Then probability of oversleep multiplied by the probability of pop quiz. Then we get 0.48 multiplied by 0.25. Then we get to realize that it is 12%. All right, let's look at number 12. So x minus 1 is a factor. What does that mean? Then by using the remainder theorem, I can plug in x equal to 1 and then set it equal to 0. So we get 1 cubed minus k times 1 squared plus 2 times 1. And that has to be equal to 0 because it's a factor. Then what we end up getting is 1 minus k plus 2 equal to 0 and k is equal to 3. So therefore, choice 3 becomes our answer. All right, number 13. So it says uh, profit is in fact equal to revenue minus the cost. So then what is the cost? It's a revenue minus the profit. Now, then uh, we get to realize that uh, revenue was 0.3x squared plus 150x, and then profit is uh, negative 0.5, that expression. When you subtract them, we get to realize that uh, 
choice one becomes the answer because point th negative point three minus negative point five becomes positive point two. And when you ca carry on the calculation, choice one becomes the answer. All right, number 14. So here we have our uh, first one is increasing by 6%. If I were to write that up as a function, then it would have been something like this, 1240 times 1 1.06 to the t power. And the other one is 890 times 1.11 to the t power. So now, basically what we are looking for when they're equal to each other. So what I have done was I sketched the graph, both of them, and found, found the intersection. And I realized the intersection uh, happens when x is around 7 or 7.1. Uh, so our answer was choice 1. 7 was the answer. All right, number 15. What is the inverse? How do you find the inverse? Uh, you let f of x uh, as y, so we have y equals x cubed minus 2, and change x and y. Then, uh, <coughs> and then we're going to solve for y. So we're going to add 2 first to each, uh, to each side. So x plus 2 must be equal to y to the third power. Then y is equal to cube root of x plus 2, which is choice 3. All right. Let's look at number 16. We have four roots, but one thing that which we have to realize is that uh, i and negative i is imaginary. So those are not x-intercepts. So only x-intercepts that we have is negative 5 and then uh, 3. So negative 5 and 3 are the only x-intercepts. That means choice 2 seems to be correct, and that's the only uh, x-intercept. So therefore, choice two becomes the answer. Number 17. So in this case, what we have to do is we need to put our normal CDF and then uh, uh, if you're to use the calculator, then we're gonna be end up getting uh, 0.2743. So that's how we can answer this question number 17. Number 18, we have these two expressions, but you will realize the hundreds are equal to each other. So one half to the one over eighth power should be equal to e to the k power. Then to find the value of k, we're gonna set them equal to each other here. How can you get rid of uh, e and then find out what k is equal to? We're gonna uh, get the natural log on both sides. Then simply ln of one half to the one eighth power is equal to k. So once you put that into calculator, you're gonna get negative point oh eight seven. All right, let's look at number nineteen. We are translating this one to the one unit, uh, uh, right one unit and down one unit or one unit. So then our new function becomes this way: x minus one and then minus one. But we're going to set that equal to zero because that's the x-intercept. Let y equal to zero. Then log base two of x minus one should be equal to one. If you turn this one into exponential function, x minus one should be equal to two to the one power, hence x equals three, which is choice four. All right, let's look at number tw uh, 20. Uh, so when you rewrite this one, you get to realize that that's the 4x multiplied by x to the 2 third power. And then cube root of 8 is 2. And then x to the what? 5 over 3 power because one third as an exp uh, cube root is 1 third as an exponent. So when you combine them together, that's in fact equal to 4 to the what? x to the 5 third power because 1 here is hidden. 1 plus 2 thirds becomes 5 thirds, plus 2 to the 2 times x to the 5 third power. When you combine them together, we get 6 times x to the 5 third power, which is choice 2. So we're going to stop here for now, and then we will continue in part 2. See you later.